I have all these leadership roles in life, and as sure as I'm standing on this big stage, you know what, I better be standing on the rock of personal accountability. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're training on customer service and team building and change and selling skills, and you're not building personal accountability into the hearts and minds of everybody in this company, you are not getting full value from that other training. Personal accountability can be taught, and that's what QBQ is all about, asking better questions, making better choices. If you could change one thing to enhance the effectiveness of your organization, what would you change? If you could change one thing to enhance the effectiveness of your organization, what would you change? Most people come out with the P's. Programs, policies, products, pricing, procedures, people, more people, less, less people, different people. And one guy wrote down Pepsi. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. He submits it to me on a 3 by 5 card. He says, dear Mr. Miller, if we could just switch the Coke machine in the break room to Pepsi. <laughs> Life would be great around our firm. What was the question? What's the one thing you would change to enhance the effectiveness of your organization? If I had asked that at minute one today, I just can almost guarantee you, it sounds kind of arrogant, I know, I can almost just guarantee you that nobody in this room would have said what? Me. Who's the only person we can change? Yes! I'm sorry. I, I just get so excited when I get a group that is slightly above average. I know I can only change me, John. You didn't need to come to Atlanta to teach me something so basic. Okay, fair point. Quick question. As I've been up here talking about personal accountability, how many of you, come on, be honest, we're picturing two people you know who are not here but should have been in this meeting this afternoon to hear this message on personal accountability? <laughs> how many of you have been thinking, glad my boss is here? <laughs> he might need a remedial. <laughs> now, I speak to a lot of corporations that have done way too much team building. We've done so much team building over 20 years, we've lost sight of the power of one. We've lost sight of the individual. And so we actually end up using this kind of language. We hide behind the team. Well, the team didn't get it done. The team didn't have enough resources. The, the team wasn't committed. Nobody on the team cared as much as I cared. My middle name is Martyr. The team has become the excuse for things not getting done. Tim and Ken had the QBQ book. They live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They're driving to Madison, Wisconsin, four-hour drive, a couple in their 40s, been together 20 years. They took the book with them. They decided to read it to each other in the car. On accountability, chapter by chapter. Ken later told me after half an hour, it degenerated. It went like this. Well, honey, do I have a page for you? <laughs> oh, yeah, dear, have you seen page 70? Your picture's on it! What can I do to adapt to the changing world and continue to develop myself? Those are powerful questions. They denote ownership. They denote accountability. They're all about responsibility. And they are the opposite of blame, victim, thinking, procrastination, and the opposite of our society today. So no longer do I say, why do we have to go through all this change? And when is someone going to train me? And I begin to say, well, what can I do to adapt to the changing world? Life's more fun that way. How can I develop myself? Because that's my job. I own it. See, here's the problem with victim thinking. The minute I play victim, who, who am I serving? And be careful with your answer. Who am I serving when I play victim? Nobody. I'm not even serving myself. There's a better path. It's called personal accountability. And is it fair to come in and lecture people and say, you need to be more accountable? No. We need to show them how. The QBQ is the way to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, folks. I'm sure you could talk more about victim thinking. We probably all could, but... Let's move to the center of your sheet. Let's avoid questions that begin with when. Have you ever heard these questions? When will they get back to me? When will the customer return my call? When will I find good people? When will Fran give us the vision? What consultant started that myth that we can't be productive and effective without a vision? How about this one? When is someone going to clarify my job? You know what? Adult adult says this. I will clarify my own job because I'm a risk taker. I will make a difference. I will add value by clarifying my own job to the extent that I can. You mean I can't blame competition? You mean I can't blame the marketing department? You mean I can't blame Rochester? You mean I can't ask, who gave me these people? Oh, I hired them. <laughs> you mean I can't blame the economy? You mean I can't use the 10 terrible words? Do you all know what the 10 terrible words are? But boss... My country is different from all the others. And then I'll go to the office and I'll ask questions you've never heard at O'Reilly's. Who dropped the ball? Who missed the deadline? Who made the mistake? Who gave me this location? And all of a sudden we're all wrapped up in the new uniform. The company 
coat of arms. Have you seen the company coat of arms? If not, here it is. The company coat of arms. You ever seen that? What a waste. Finger pointing and blame. Have you seen the circle of blame? Have you seen the circle of blame? I'll just use a you know, corporate structure. Uh, CEO blames a VP, who blames the regional manager, who blames the territory manager, who blames the store manager, who blames the employee, who blames the customer, who blames the U.S. government. The government blames the schools. Schools blame the board of education. Board blames the teachers. Teachers blame the parents. Parents blame the teenager. The teen blames the mom. And the mom blames the husband. And the husband looks back at the wife and says, why didn't the caramel corn go overnight? I walked in the Rock Bottom Brewery restaurant in Minneapolis on a Thursday. It was so busy, they actually gave me a stool at the bar. And I sat down, and I was waiting to be waited on. And after a few minutes, a young man runs by me carrying dirty dishes on a tray. And he stops, and he looks at me. He says, sir, have you been helped? And I said, well, no, I haven't been, but I really just want salad and a roll, and I'm kind of in a hurry. Well, I can get you that, sir. What would you like to drink? I said, well, I'll have a Diet Coke. It's my favorite. And he almost looked disappointed. He said, oh, I'm sorry, sir. We only sell Pepsi products here. I said, ah, no thanks, I'll have water and lemon. He says, great, I'll be back. So he takes off, and I'm sitting there waiting, and a couple minutes later, he's back with the salad and the roll and the, and the uh, water and the lemon. Thank you, you're welcome. And this is a very key point, very key point. I was satisfied. Suddenly, I feel the wind of enthusiasm blown behind my back. The long arm of service shoots over my shoulder. Places right next to my plate, 20-ounce bottle of, help me out. A group in Chicago last week said, uh, Bud Light. No, a Diet Coke. And I was just so surprised, I just muttered something like, thanks. And he takes off, you know, and he's yelling, you're welcome. And I had one thought, hire this man now. Because I smell something marvelous in this young man. I don't smell any victim thinking. I don't smell any procrastination. I don't smell any finger pointing or blame. I don't smell anybody asking, when are we going to get the vision from the senior management team? When are they going to get us the prod? You know, all this stuff. I just, I smell accountability. I called him over. I, said, I, I thought you didn't sell Coke products. He says, we don't. I said, well, where did this come from? He says, grocery store around the corner. I said, who paid for it? He said, um, I did, sir, just a dollar out of my tip money. <laughs> and then I said, how'd you have time to go get it? You've been so busy. I think you'll love his response. You ready? Okay, right. I said, how'd you have time to go get it? He goes, oh, I didn't go get it, sir. I sent my manager. Come on, right now, turn to somebody in this room and say these words. Get me a Diet Coke. <laughs> wow. You know, I came back a month later. I could not forget him. His name was Jacob Miller. I love his last name. Uh, John Miller, if you didn't know, okay? And I walked in to the restaurant, and I said, one for Jacob Miller's section, please. I want to sit wherever Jacob's serving. And the hostess says, I'm sorry, Jacob is no longer. And my mind went crazy. I started thinking these thoughts. You didn't really lose a guy with character, did you? You didn't really lose a guy who did not say, why can't the customer read the menu? He did not say, when is management going to give us the tools we need? He did not say, why are we so short-staffed? He did not say, why am I always stressed out and don't get any support? He did not say, why do we have to go through all this change? And when is someone going to train me? He just looked at me and said, hey, how can I help you reach your goals, sir? What can I do to serve others? You lost a guy like that? Now, I didn't say all that to her in the lobby of the restaurant. I just thought it. Let's go back. One for Jacob Miller's section, please. And she says, I'm sorry, Jacob is no longer. And I thought all that stuff, but then I just said, oh, don't tell me you lost him. And she says, oh, no, sir, we didn't lose him. We promoted him to management. And I said, management, what a waste. <laughs> 